And, ah. uh, you know what? You said modder, but with your slight impediment, it sounded like you said they expect models to fix it. They do. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cindy. Um, I'm not really a programmer. Stop doing revenge as your first attack, you dumbass. <laughs> Dumb piece of shit, dragon. <laughs> that would be great if like that was one of the things that happened in Game of Thrones. Just like the last season, they're like, they're like, all right, Drogon. Now go use your attacks on all these uh, undead creatures. What, what are you using? Are you using? That magic spell that does nothing. Like, you stupid dragon. Stupid fucking dragon. God damn it. Thank goodness they did Okay. That counts as a physical attack. Now, <sighs> if you do a physical attack, you'll get kicked out of the battle. Which, yeah. Which might be good. Yeah, I just don't care. Whatever. I don't care. I don't need any fucking... I don't, I don't need any, I don't need any goddamn experience. Sneeze. Or not. No. Okay, cool. It's not, whatever. It's, it's a percentage chance. It just happens to be probably like a 50% chance. One thing I've, wor I've learned, like, uh, making games and... Uh, I haven't made that many games, but in the time I've spent making games, is it's really easy to make something that, um, uh, like you think, okay, well, this only happens 10% of the time. That won't happen very often. And then you go to test it, and you're like, this happens it, every time. Every two, no, it doesn't happen every time. It just happens every two seconds because yeah. because every 10% of the time turns out to be a lot or whatever. Or you think of something that's like, like it's almost like in, a, in when you're programming, you almost can't because if you have multiple people playing a game over lengths of time. Yeah. The chances of this th one thing happening, you know, every day are probably a lot. Yeah. Like if you had, a, if you were making like a Call of Duty game and you had it th that every one millionth percentage of a time, uh, you know, uh, that that n a nude Cindy Crawford comes by and gives you a blowjob for no reason. Yeah. Uh, it would happen a lot. Yeah. And so that's one of the things you learn about. You learn a little bit about um, uh, what's that? Th thing where oh that does a lot of damage yeah it does uh takes him down to a percentage though for health oh i see so then me doing this finishes the job yeah. she's actually quite powerful when she gets the right uh, if you ability. actually use sketch and you don't have a pathological terror of using it yeah if you played this game in the 90s hey guys if you're a 90s kid and you played this game in the 90s 10 ways to tell you a real 90s <laughs> kid new rule to blake's top 10 presented now 10 ways to find out you're a 90s kid um, if you were born in num number ten, <laughs> if you were born in uh, like sometime in some the eighties or or nineties, you're probably a nineties kid. Probably number nine. Um, if you remember uh, Transformers, the the original oh, uh, the original series. Number seven. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, if you number six. Uh, if you remember number four. The CBC logo. Number three. Um, uh, it's more transformers. Number again. four. I uh, didn't finish uh, saying that one. <laughs> it's uh, what? I don't remember which one was number four. Um, it was the. If you remember the, it's transformers again. Did I say transformers? There already? you go. That was the one. Uh, or the smoggies. Or um, if you know the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but you uh, are, but not because of. That was all one. Number three. <laughs> it's it's NASA value to millennials. Um, Still on number four apparently. <laughs> number three. Okay. No, I say number three. Number three. <laughs> um, if you played Final Fantasy VI when it first came out for the Super Nintendo. Aha. Okay, number two. I just had a number two because I was so worried you were going to be the one that say that. Number two. Oh, God. And the number one way that you can tell that you're a 90s kid is if you remember the following zany theme song. You never actually made the point you are going to make. If you played Final Fantasy VI as a kid in the 90s, Top 10! Uh, fuck it. I mean, played the Final Fantasy VI as a kid in the 90s. Um, you, there was the sketch ability, which was pretty sketchy, because anytime uh -huh. you used it, there was a slight chance... Like, okay, so when you use a sketch, it's a slight chance you'll be able to control an enemy and use one of its random abilities. Yeah. There's also a slight chance at the back that it would completely obliterate your save file. Yeah. Um, it would give you, like... Uh, 99 of every item or it might like double some characters or it might 
um, cause all the graphics to screw up or just crash the game. Or just start deleting save files at random. It deleted one of our save files one time. Um, it was a terrible glitch. And I remember when I first found out about this glitch and we first exper I first experienced it, I called up the Nintendo hotline because I was like, um, yeah, I think this, I've got, there's a glitch in this game. I, like, I thought, it, I knew, even when I was like 15 or whatever, when I, played, so I was like, okay, this is a bug. I think it's a bug in this game that like seems to affect my save file when I use the sketch ability. Mm -hmm. And apparently, they didn't know, they didn't believe me. Uh, apparently it wasn't a known bug for years later. Um, or maybe it was, and they just ignored, like a lot, like a, like a lot of like, QA does. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, basically they didn't believe me, they didn't think it was real, but now the sketch is known that it causes all kinds of glitches. Luckily, the version we have doesn't seem to have that problem. Nope. Magical, isn't it? We live in the future. Magical, we live in the future. Now you know that you are going back to the past. Hello, I'm from the past. I know all things that will ever be, though, so it's kind of irrelevant. Relevant. Future b b past guy who can see the future, living in the present, in the new Fox series, Future Past, Days of Future Past. It should be Future Tense, man. Uh, the Plu Perfect Tense. Plutarch's One Defense. We're, we're coming up next on next on Fox. Next on Fox Kids. It's the new cartoon show. <laughs> Whatever Brendan just said. Plutarch's New Defense. Pl Plutarch's New Defense, where we'll be talking about uh, Roman philosophy uh, and... Mostly in terms of law. <laughs> and, of course, we'll also be talking about uh, these crazy teens that constantly get into fights with robot lobsters. And now, Plutarch's Last Defense. You, you believe that law is, is something that affects all men regardless of their caste or, caste or class, then you will soon see how... This is a very <laughs> eventful battle, can I just say. You gotta bring it? I, th bring I guess it probably game. does non-elemental damage, too, so it might be good on the um, uh, island of the of Dr. Moreau or whatever. Uh, yeah, no. Fuck it. We're gonna take on the Crimson Dragon. Oh, there you go. That's oh, right. wait, wait, wait. Ah, ah. Power up, power up. Okay, I need to go save first. So next time on the Super Spears Brothers, we're going to be taking on Apocalypse. I am Apocalypse. I am invulnerable. Oh, quick, quick. Let's go punch him a lot. Oh, maybe my claws can take down this bucket of bolts. I do believe that this is a very inadvisable theory. You realize that Apocalypse isn't a robot, right? X-Men, go attack them. <laughs> <laughs> I, the master strategist, has decided so. I didn't want to sketch him. I do believe that the correct course of action, uh, gentlemen, would possibly be to trap him in something since nothing else ever works. I'm gonna scratch this guy. Hey, I'm, I'm Gambit gonna take say hello. Gam Shut up, Jojo. <laughs> There's a Gambit movie coming out in the future. Yeah, it's on Gam Jojo Binks. Uh, it's on Jojo Bink Binks. Misa from Louisiana. Misa gonna jump and attack. Misa, power up these cards. Oh no! All the cards are all over my face. Oh, oh. Ah. Uh, Jojo is truly the best Star Wars character. And guys, uh, top 10 Star Wars characters now. Number 10, Jar Jar Binks. Number 9, Jar Jar Binks. Number, Binks. Number 8, Jar Jar Binks. 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 Number 7, Yoda. Yoda. Yeah, Yoda. 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 Number, Number 6, Jar Jar Binks. Binks. Number 5, Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, Jar Jar Binks. Number 4. The guy with the, the squid head. Yeah, that guy. Num number three. Jar Jar Binks. No, yeah. Number two, Yoda's and Jar Jar Binks' love child that only exists in the extended universe. <laughs> and She's very sexy. And you know what? My universe just got extended thinking ah, about it. It's no longer canon like my canon because I'm now impotent. <laughs> and the number one best character in Star Wars is Darth Vader. You thought us we would do a twist on that one? Nope. It's just Darth it's Vader. Han Solo. Oh, Han Solo. Yeah, Jesus Christ, Blake. How could you get this wrong? It's, it's almost like uh, the name Han Solo to me was like he was starting to do like a masturbation joke. I and already he already like, walked off the set, Blake. <laughs> this guy only walks if you stop talking. Misa, black stereotype. Misa, Italian. Hello, I'm Giorgio Mario. It's me, Giorgio. <laughs> it's me, Giorgio. We're done here.